The New America Foundation is a think tank based here in Washington, D.C., and there's a number of different focus areas. The focus area that uh, I that I focus my research on is on the intersection of technology, mobile technology, uh, economic development, and entrepreneurship. And uh, you know, broadly speaking, I think uh, when we're looking at the universal impact of mobile technology around the world, um, we, we need to keep in mind three main components. Uh, we were ta Tom mentioned before that there are six billion uh, mobile phone subscribers in the world. Five billion of those are located in the developing world. Um, and when you talk about uh, developed infrastructure, telecommunications infrastructure is often the most uh, modernized uh, and developed uh, infrastructure in some of these developing economies. And so how do you leverage uh, some of those, uh, how do you leverage that for impact? And I think that uh, speaks to this larger trend that we're seeing that, that, that was discussed in the first panel, which is uh, that m mobile technology, I would argue, isn't just a change agent it's a leapfrogging agent. And so what we've seen is that mobile technology and mobile phones have leapfrogged and skipped uh, the development of technology from landlines to uh, cellular, towel, cell, cellular towels. Uh, and um, as well as changing the velocity of money in places like Kenya, the Philippines, uh, as well as t Tanzania. And I think one of the areas of interest that I've focused on uh, increasingly, because I think this is where, uh, even in the developing world, the, the, trend, the, the trend's going towards, is the mobile web. Uh, so even in, you know, we were mentioning before, and everybody raised their hands when they were asked about if they had a mobile device in their pocket. Uh, and, and Pew came out with a, with a study that said 85% of adults over the age of 18 have a mobile phone, 45% have a smartphone. And when you look at the dichotomy between the developing world, um, non-smartphones or feature phones are still ubiquitous, but um, increasingly we're seeing smartphones even in the developing world, which I think is a really interesting trend. I was playing around with a $50 Android device that has uh, 3G connectivity and a camera phone in Kenya. And if you look at Kenya as an example of, of the mobile web and this mobile leapfrogging, uh, you, you'll see that uh, the, the, cent, the Central Bank of Kenya just released data that said uh, when it comes to people accessing the web, 99% access the web through their mobile phone. And so this has tremendous potential in terms of, uh, of focusing on these different research areas. And I think what, what's, what's even more interesting is that these three components are pointing us in a direction where mobile devices are not just becoming an, an access point to important information, but they're becoming an authoring point. And how do we, and I've tried to focus my research on how do you make this more of a meaningful contribution at the global scale? Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, just basically, you seem very enthusiastic about all this. I, yeah. I wanted to ask you about, uh, one of the, I, I was just in um, Europe a couple weeks ago, and one of the last couple times I've been back, one of the, one of the things that I, I've noticed is that like maybe five or eight years ago, um, some of the some of the U.S. companies where they had European, like the cell phone makers, the the guys who were like working in the U.S. would have like European cell phones because they were so much better than. But now it's like some of the U.S. models are like the big thing over there, and and I'm just wondering, do you is it your sense that um, that the U.S. is sort of regaining like a very strong um, position versus the rest of the world in terms of you know, it, it's 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 part place in the in the mobile world. Yeah, I, I think uh, w when you're comparing, you know, the U.S., uh, one of the things that it is uh, a leader or, or the leader on is 4G or LTE technologies. Um, and so, in, in that way, uh, the U.S. is a very interesting market that that's leading the way. Um, you know, I was conducting research in India. Um, and I was struck by the fact that there were seven mobile network operators with more than 50 million users. Um, and what that does is it's, that extremely competitive environment has driven down costs, not just for voice services, but increasingly to generate revenue, they have to push their users into uh, data, data revenues and data models. And so uh, when it comes to devices, uh, I, I think uh, when you look at the developing world, and as I was saying before, I think that's the large, you know, large growth areas. Android services and these open platforms are, are literally leading the way as well. And so I would argue what, what's, what's interesting it, or what's, when you're talking about devices and when you're talking about different uh, markets, and, and you know, each has a different context. 
Um, and each kind of has an interesting story to be told uh, uh, when it comes to innovation or where there's impact happening. Okay. Let me ask a question, and you, we'll just go down the line and, and everybody respond to it. Uh, so where are we today? Are we, that's one of the things I can't, I've, I've had trouble figuring out. Are we at the, because some of the things you'll hear as well, you know, mobile's really coming on, but you haven't seen anything yet. And how is the world, what, what, what are, how, how are things going to change in the next 10 or 15 years in terms of, I mean, what, what is the, what is the, you know, and we, nobody's going to hold it because nobody's going to remember probably what you said tomorrow. So I'm just, but I mean, how, 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 what are we going to see over the next 10 or 15 years in terms of the way the mo mobility is moving? And let's start, um, well, let's, let's break things up a little bit. Eric, you, you go first. Yeah, and, and I think I was touching on this a little before, but I think uh, when it comes to the mobile web, you know, there's going to be a huge, uh, not just within the United States, but globally speaking, a huge trend towards different developing countries uh, coming onto the web through their mobile phones. Uh, I, I, the large part of the world will access the web through their mobile phone, and this has tremendous implications for uh, policy and a wide range of things. Um, and I think as well, what was touched on in the first panel, which I would like to echo again, is that mobile data uh, it presents a huge opportunity to better understand uh, underserved communities around the world, um, whether it be, uh, you know, an interesting example was in the aftermath of the Haiti earthquake. Um, the mobile network operators in Haiti opened up their data to better track displaced populations uh, to, 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 to channel uh, um, uh, relief services to, to track the outbreak of cholera. And I think, it, it, you know, as this mobile web penetration grows, this data is just become, going to become richer and richer, and there, there's going to be more interesting insights to be gleaned. Uh, obviously, privacy issues are going to need to be accounted for in anonymized data, but there's a lot of interesting movements in this space that we're already seeing. Uh, in, I was talking with uh, Robert Fitzpatrick of the UN Global Pulse, and he was convening um, the 10 leading mobile network operators in Indonesia with the Ministry uh, of, Indi uh, of a Ministry Agency, and they're looking to create MOUs right now around better sharing of data. And I, and I think that um, you know there's a lot of really exciting things. I'm on the air. This, I'm on the side that we're at the tip of the iceberg, and we're going to keep on moving really fast. And we need to position ourselves for a lot of these trends uh, globally as well here in the United States. 